Angelo and Christine Del Guzzi have had many sleepless nights. At age three, their daughter Fiorenza started to awake terrified nearly every night. When Fiorenza is going through an episode, she'll usually begin by yelling very loudly, usually something like, no! And then I'll go in to check on her to make sure everything is okay. At that point, she will acknowledge that I'm there and start yelling at me something to the effect of, leave me alone, go away! She'll charge at me sometimes. She's swung at me. She has spit at me. She's doing this all while very cognizant of her surroundings and aware that you're there. Seems as though she's awake. Awake and misbehaving? Since her eyes are wide open and her actions are mindful, night terrors are commonly mistaken for bad behavior. At first, when Fiorenza began having night terrors, our first reaction was to discipline or reprimand, again, because we thought she was fully awake and understanding what was going on. Soon they learned Fiorenza wasn't awake. It was night terrors she was experiencing. And during the outbursts, she was in a very deep phase of sleep. Normally children go through different stages of sleep, from light sleep to deep sleep, and they go through a phase called REM sleep or dreaming sleep. During dreaming sleep, children might have nightmares, but it turns out that night terrors usually occur during deep sleep. Often, night terrors are confused with nightmares, when in fact, they are very different. Most children who experience nightmares will have a vivid memory of the dream, which can affect their mood when they wake. But children with night terrors usually have no memory of the episode. Karenza doesn't remember the night terrors at all. As they're happening during a very deep phase of sleep, she has no recollection of the event whatsoever, and it doesn't affect her on a daily basis at all. Now you'll brush your teeth now. Night terrors occur on their own without any preceding anxiety or fear or scary event. Night terrors are called physiologic problems where the child goes through all the behaviors that you would think would be associated with, with being scared without being aware or conscious of anything. Because the child is unaware of the event, night terrors usually affect parents more. You may become frustrated or frightened when repeated attempts to soothe and calm your child have no effect. Usually the best thing to do is let the night terror run its course. But there are a few techniques you can use to make things easier for both you and your child. Stay calm. Remind yourself that although a night terror looks scary, it's not hurting your child. Increase sleep time. Children who go to bed agitated or overtired are more likely to suffer sleep disturbances, which cause night terrors. Lengthen nap time. Let her sleep a little later in the morning or put her to bed earlier. Establish a regular sleep routine and be sure to stick to it every night. Use a nightlight and read her a pleasant story. Play soothing sounds or sing a few lullabies just before bedtime. Stand by until it's over. Though it may be difficult to watch your child terrified, there's really nothing you can do to stop it. And don't mention it. It's best not to talk about the night terror the next morning. Children do not remember having a night terror, so why upset them if it's not necessary? If your child is having frequent night terrors or you're worried about them, it's a good idea to bring them to your doctor. The doctor can do an exam and also rule out other causes of sleep problems they can help you sort out whether this is truly a night terror or some other kind of a medical or sleep problem that needs different kinds of treatment. Night terrors tend to occur around the same time each night. You can try to prevent them by gently waking your child about 15 minutes before a typical episode would start. If you do this several nights in a row, you may be able to alter the child's sleep pattern and disrupt the night terror from happening. Some signs of a night terror include Sudden bouts of apparent awakening, overwhelming fear, terror, or strange behavior, confusion, sweating, rapid heartbeat, screaming or crying, no memory of the event, inability to fully awaken. My best advice for other parents experiencing night terrors with their child is to do your utmost to leave the child alone during the episode. It's easier said than done because you do want to console them, but if you sit back and wait for it to be over instead of interfering with it, 
it'll usually end much quicker. 